Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on creating histograms in SPSS. So I have here a fictitious data set in the data view in SPSS. And I have three independent variables and one dependent variable. So the dependent variable, let's assume, is a general measure of mental health symptoms with a lower score indicating fewer symptoms. And then we have three independent variables. So we have duration, so this would be a duration of a treatment. And this would be, say, a one-on-one -on -one treatment. So you have six weeks, 12 week, and 18 week. Then you have emphasis. So this is what was emphasized by the counselor and the treatment. And we can assume that the uh, participants for a study like this would uh, suffer from all three types of symptom, the uh, substance use, depression, and trauma. But this would be the emphasis. This would be what the uh, counselor focuses on. So you can see this one independent variable has three levels, the substance use, uh, depression, and trauma emphasis. And they're spread out. These, this independent variable has uh, these levels spread out throughout each level of the duration. So for the six week duration, you can see there's substance use, depression, and trauma, and there's the same for 12 week and same for 18 week. And in a similar manner, we have gender and male and female. And again, it's this is divided up so that an equal number of males and females are represented for each emphasis. And by doing that, of course, an equal number for each duration. So there are, of course, a lot of different statistical procedures we could run here, but I want to show you how we can take a look at this data using histograms. So we go to graphs, to legacy dialogues. The last selection here is histogram. And SPSS has a fairly robust uh, histogram builder here. Uh, in this dialog, you can see by default, it would actually look like this. So the variable, of course, would be the dependent variable. We're going to move that over. And there's an option here to display the normal curve or not. I'm going to go ahead and select that. So let's take a look at this first. So this would be all the data, uh, regardless of what group uh, the data came from. Right? So this is all the dependent variable scores. And you can see it certainly has a the feel of a normal distribution. There are more scores toward the, the center. Uh, but either way, this is how the data is distributed. The frequency on the y-axis here, and of course the scores, the symptom level, on the x-axis. So let's take this a step further. Uh, right from the output, we can go to graphs, legacy dialogue again, and histogram. And you can see here we have an option for rows and columns. So let's take a look at the same symptom level just by gender. I'll we'll put gender in rows. I'll click OK. And you can see what it does here is it divides, well, actually presents two histograms, one on top of the other. So you have the histogram for the scores from the male participants, and then the histogram from the scores from the female participants. And just by taking a quick look, uh, you can see there are some differences. There are more low scores here in this, uh, between 30 and 40 here for females. And there are a few male participants that have scores observed that are higher than any of the female participants. So if we go back, I can show you another version of this. So you can see I have the gender variable in rows, but I can just move this to columns. And this is how the data would be presented. Now I think in this situation, uh, you, you want to look at the histogram uh, model that's the most interpretable. It's the, you know, kind of the easiest to uh, understand and interpret. I feel like the over-under design here is a little easier to read than the side-by-side, -side. Uh, so the row-based as opposed to the column-based. Uh, but both, of course, are available. 
Now we can make things a little more complex with the histogram. So say we want it, we'll put gender back in rows. But by column, let's say we want to look at group. So we'll add that to columns. And now you can see we have six histograms. And there's a few things that stand out, right? For the 18-week female, so the intersection of 18-week and female, there's quite a few low scores there. There's a spike there. And for the 12-week male, there's a spike kind of in the center, near the center uh, of the frequency distribution. So this takes a look at gender and duration. Of course, we could do the same thing with gender and emphasis. And of course, there are three levels of this independent variable. So again, it wouldn't be surprising to learn that there are six uh, histograms. And again, there's different variations uh, across these frequency distributions uh, that might be of interest to somebody researching this. If we want to not take into account gender, we want to take a look at just emphasis and group. We could simply swap these out. And of course, then still six histograms. And this looks at the duration here and the emphasis. And you can see there are some differences here in the six-week trauma. There were a lot of high scores. Uh, there was a spike in the middle here for the 12-week trauma. And the scores were clustered very close together for the 12-week substance use. And in terms of what combination might be the most effective, just by looking at this graphically, you can see that the depression and 18-week, so that the depression emphasis and the 18-week duration, uh, the distribution is a little bit more to the left than these other distributions, meaning the scores are lower. So this gives us a lot of information. Uh, these, this is nine histograms. Uh, however, uh, this can be pushed even further. If you go to histogram, uh, you can put multiple variables on a row, uh, or a column for that matter. You can put it on the column. I'm going to put it on the row here to show you. And now you can see, instead of nine, histograms, we have 18, 3 times 6. And since I put the gender on the row, you can see you still have the uh, substance use, depression, and trauma, the emphasis going across the top. But down the side now, you have 6-week, but then divided by gender, so male and female, then 12-week divided by gender, and 18-week divided by gender. So one thing that stands out here, or a couple of things that stand out here, is for 18-week, uh, with the gender being female and the emphasis being trauma, there's a low score there. And then for the 18-week male with depression emphasis, uh, there's low scores as well as with substance use emphasis. And of course, you could configure this in, uh, in terms of the gender being on the column instead, if you want to look at it that way, just lays it out differently to where you have the three different types of emphasis and then the gender below that. Still 18 histograms, but this is uh, this has three rows and six columns, as to opposed to this example here, which has three columns and six rows. I think between these two, uh, the first one I ran is a little easier to see uh, and therefore a little easier to interpret than the second one. I hope you found this video on creating histograms in Excel to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.